your heart also has valves that prevent backflow. Um, we have AV valves and we have semilunar valves. Your AV valves, your atrioventricular valves, um, these are composed of flaps or cusps that um, you either have two or three cusps, depending on which valve you're talking about. Your tricuspid valve has three cusps. You find it between your right atrium and your ventricle. Um, your bicuspid or your mitral valve only contains two cusps, and that one's between your left atrium and ventricle. Um, now, these flaps, these cusps, these valves, they need a little bit of help to open and close. So you have what are referred to as chordae tendinae. These are um, tendon-like structures that are attached to the, um, to the ends, the inferior portions of the cusps, and they're also attached to papillary muscles. And the papillary muscles, every time they contract, they basically pull on the chordae tendinae, which pull on the valves to help open um, and close the valves themselves. We also have two more valves, your semilunar valves. We find these, um, you have pulmonary and aortic semilunar valves. Your pulmonary semilunar valve would be located between your right ventricle and your pulmonary trunk. Your aortic semilunar valve would be between your left ventricle and your aorta. Um, the functions are the same. We're still trying to prevent backflow. Okay. Um, these look just a little bit different. So you've got your bicuspid and your tricuspid, these um, cusps, these flaps. Okay. Um, the semilunar valves, you can see they physically just look a little bit different. And both your aortic and your pulmonary um, valves, they do have the three cusps as well. Okay. Um, so it's really just all about location. Okay. It's really just about location there. I think this looks like a giant bug. We've got eyes and a nose and a mouth. Um, here we've got a real pulmonary valve when it's closed versus when it's open. When it's open, I think it looks like a giant fish mouth, but that's just my weird brain. Okay, we mentioned that we have to send blood to the heart itself as well. This is called your coronary circulation. Um, your coronary circulation is going to come off of the aorta itself, and we have right and left coronary arteries that then branch off into smaller arteries to feed the rest of the myocardium itself. Um, so the myocardium is too thick for the oxygen just to diffuse through the chamber walls and into the other parts of the heart cells, so we do need a, um, a separate blood supply for the heart. We mentioned that the, um, the right and the left coronary arteries branch from the ascending aorta. Okay, so right there and right up under there. So right away, we're um, getting that blood immediately as it leaves the heart. So you got your right and left coronary arteries. Um, and then all of your smaller veins that carry the deoxygenated blood from the heart, everybody empties into the coronary sinus and then the coronary sinus will empty into the right atrium. Okay. Just like your superior and your inferior vena cava do. Um, this is just kind of an FYI. You can see what arteries are feeding each side of the heart, what veins are uh, draining each side of the heart back into the coronary sinus. It's just kind of an FYI. And we've got systemic and pulmonary circulation. We mentioned previously that your superior and inferior vena cava as well as your coronary sinus are all going to dump into your right atrium. We would then move down through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. We move through the semilunar, pulmonary semilunar valve through your pulmonary trunk. We split into your right and left pulmonary arteries. Um, we get smaller into your arterioles. We get even smaller into your capillaries. Your pulmonary capillaries are where gas exchange happens. Um, once we pick up the oxygen, we now be, uh, move through pulmonary venules, and then we've got your right and left pulmonary veins that dump into your left atrium. We go through your bicuspid valve into your left ventricle. We have to move through your aortic semilunar valve to get to your aorta, and then we go out to the body itself. Okay, we send all that oxygenated blood out to the body, and once it's deoxygenated, we just start over again. And here you can see the difference from the pulmonary circulation going from the right ventricle to your heart, 
or excuse me, to your lungs. We're gonna pick up all that oxygen and come back to the heart um, versus sending all that oxygenated blood out through the aorta to the body, up and down. And we use the blood and we return the deoxygenated blood back to the heart. And just a little bit more detail here. Picking up the deoxygenated blood into the left, or excuse me, the right atrium. I'm gonna go down to the right ventricle, out to the heart, out to the heart. I keep saying out to the heart, out to the lungs, you guys, out to the lungs. We're gonna pick up that oxygen and then we would come back to the left side of the heart and we would leave through the aorta to the body. Now, we did mention coronary circulation. Um, those blood vessels coming off of the aorta to feed the heart itself. Um, these are known to suffer from uh, fatty buildup called plaques that result in coronary artery disease or CAD. This is basically the leading cause of death worldwide. As these plaques build up, it decreases the blood flow to the myocardium. And so um, your myocardium, your heart muscle is not getting enough oxygen. Um, we call this myocardial ischemia, and if it results in um, chest pains, we call it angina pectoris. Um, if it gets bad enough, if we're completely blocking off oxygen to supply to parts of your heart, we call this a myocardial infarction, also known as a heart attack. Um, if those uh, plaques actually break and turn into clots, they could also block off a blood vessel which would prevent oxygenation. Anytime you are preventing oxygenation to your muscle tissue, um, that tissue will eventually die. Um, and so just some of the classic symptoms of a heart attack include both chest pains, um, anxiety, sometimes you get nauseous, um, but your left arm might start to hurt. Um, in women, it's typical to also uh, suffer from lower back pain or jaw pain instead. And so um, a lot of women will just chalk that up to, oh, my back's hurting today, um, and not really take that quite as seriously. So just kind of be aware of that. Now, if you do end up with a blockage in an artery, um, your doctors might do what we call a bypass, coronary artery bypass graft, do a cabbage. Okay. where we take a vessel, um, a different vessel, and we attach it straight to the aorta, and it will bypass that blockage, and so all of this tissue down here would um, regain oxygenation. Okay. Now, all of these structures that we have been mentioning um, are for the adult heart. There are a few small differences in the fetal heart, so when you are still in utero, you don't um, breathe oxygen quite the same way um, because you are in utero, you are sitting in amniotic fluid. And so parts of your circulatory system aren't quite fully functional yet. So as a fetus, um, you have a foramen ovale, which connects your right and left atria which allows you to bypass your lungs. Okay. After you are born, um, this hole closes up and becomes your fossa ovalis instead. And so now we're not going to pass blood from one atria to the other. We're not going to want to bypass the lungs after birth. Okay. And one more structure, your ductus arteriosus would, um, during the fetal stage, connect your pulmonary trunk and your aorta. Um, after birth, this um, closes up and becomes your ligamentum arteriosum, and so after you're born, we should no longer be um, bypassing your lungs again. We're going to go from your, we're going to close that uh, gap between your pulmonary trunk and your aorta. Now, um, sometimes these don't close after birth. You can end up with an interatrial septal defect or a patent ductus arteriosus, and you just have surgery to repair those, but there's just a small difference. Okay. So your ductus arteriosus would connect your pulmonary trunk to your aorta, and then your uh, foramen ovale here, we've got this connection with this right and left atrium. And so this should close after birth, and this should close after birth, because now we're going to use your nice new looks. <laughs>